So we have this story that just came out of the Daily Beast. A teacher showed Islamic art depicting Muhammad to college students and lost her job. This is from Robert McCoy. Despite numerous content warnings, an art history instructor at Hamline, Hamlin University was fired for sharing images of the prophet. Academic freedom and labor rights are at stake. So I'll give you some of the information here, but I th honestly, I think you get the gist of it just from the headline. In November, an adjunct art history instructor was fired from Hamlin University, a private liberal arts college in Minnesota. This month, the month before, during an online lecture on Islamic art in the instructor's survey of art history, she had displayed depictions of the Prophet Muhammad, which is strictly forbidden for many practicing Muslims. While Hamlin decided that the, that the classroom exercise constituted a fireable Islamophobic offense, the images, devotional paintings of Muhammad produced by Muslim artists in the 14th and 16th centuries, respectively, were brought up in an educational context with fastidious attention taken to the sensitivity of the content. That considered, the termination represents an administrative intrusion on the instructor's academic freedom, ostensibly in the name of fostering the best educational environment for students, and exemplifies the precarity endemic to a higher education system ever reliant on at-will casual labor. The day after the lecture, an observant Muslim student who took issue with the images turned to Hamlin's administration to share her grievances. The professor apologized to the student via email the next day. Nonetheless, the matter escalated, and on November 7th, Hamlin's associate vice president of inclusive excellence, what? Dr. David Everett circulated an email to the Hamlin community characterizing the lecture as undeniably inconsiderate, disrespectful, and Islamophobic. In an essay published in New Lines magazine on December 22nd, uh, Christian Gruber, a historian of Islamic art at the University of Michigan who has extensively researched figural representations of the Prophet, opposed the AVPIE's description, described the images at the heart of the affair as a common material among Islamic art history, blah, blah, blah. So there was an internal um, fight over it, and eventually this, this professor got fired. This professor got fired. Um, now... Uh, again, they go on to explain, and I think they mentioned it here in the headline as well, there were multiple warnings from this professor leading into leading into it. Like, hey, just so you know, some of this stuff is insensitive to some percentage of people, but since this is an educational context, we're going to show you. Here's a picture of the Prophet Muhammad, again, made by 14th and 16th century Muslims in Iran at the time, I guess, called Persia. Um, and understand, guys, this rule, because there is a rule... Uh, in the Muslim faith, or at least among some percentage of Muslims, where you're not allowed to see any sort of depiction of the Prophet Muhammad. But understand that's just one interpretation of Islam. There are other interpretations of Islam where they do allow it. And in fact, that's why this depiction was made by Muslims previously. And so it's not something that's universal. I mean, there's over, what, over a billion Muslims in the world, maybe even around two at this point. So like, this is, okay, this is like a very niche thing with a certain percentage of Muslims, and there was fair warning in advance, and this is an educational context, and this teacher showed it, and was fired as a result of it. Now look, I need to, what was that job title of that guy? I mean, this is, so honestly, I think this is the heart of the problem here. Look, Associate Vice President of Inclusive Excellence, Dr. David Everett. So understand what this guy's job is. This guy's job is to be the sensitivity police. That's what this guy's job is. This guy's job is to listen to any kind of bickering among the, the students to take everything they say at face value, internalize it, and say, we need to create a more inclusive, safe uh, environment for all of our students by never, ever making them feel uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form ever again. And look, I, I hate to say it because it almost sounds like a boomerang, right? But like, this job shouldn't even exist. Like, what are we talking about here? What is this? Basically, you have like a content cop who like, you know, screams that, you know, there should have been a trigger warning. And by the way, there was that's this teacher warned multiple times, like, just so you know, you know, if you're not if you're not OK with this, you know, maybe sit this one out. And the student went through it and then turned around and was like, I'm outraged, still got an apology. And then still eventually, because it went up the chain of command, this person got fired. This is honestly, this this story is the living embodiment of the right-wing caricature of the left. That's what it is, right? Like, the argument from the right is lefties are all triggered little snowflakes and, you know, they want to live in a world where nobody gets offended at anything ever and they want to make, make there be professional consequences for people over the slightest infraction. And that, to a T, is exactly what happened. 
in this story. And I don't deny that the student who was offended and that this weird associate vice president of inclusive excellence, they think they sincerely believe like we are crusaders for that which is just and that which is righteous. But at the end of the day, what you really are is hall monitors, number one, and petty authoritarian goons. What everybody needs to understand is there's a big difference between what's called the libertarian left and the authoritarian left. Libertarian left means, look, we're leftist on economic issues, right? So we believe in economic patriotism. We want to help out our, our fellow countrymen and countrywomen, right? Uh, we want there to be good social safety nets. We want everybody to have a fair chance at making it. But it's libertarian on economic issues, which means what? Live and let live. So I don't want big government getting involved in my personal life, my private life, your private life. You should be able to put, put in your body whatever you want to put in your body. Marry whoever you want to marry. Just very simple, like, hands-off approach on social issues. What you're seeing here is authoritarian left. That's what this is. This is like, yeah, sure, we nominally agree on economic issues, help people out, whatever. But in people's personal lives, oh my God, be as controlling as possible. Ban people from speaking who I don't agree with. You know, deplatform people, censor people, um, you know nitpick this is like i can't think this isn't even i was gonna say this isn't even an like a minor infraction i even to use infraction in the in the context of this conversation strikes me as absurd because the other fact is look the overwhelming majority of students are not muslim in this instance but even if they were some of them wouldn't even agree with your rule of like well in my particular version we don't want to look at the prophet muhammad flip the context here if this was a situation where it was a Christian, and let's say the Christian is offended because they showed an art display that's like disrespectful to Jesus or whatever, right? And there are plenty of there's plenty of art that's like, you know, um, offensive to to Christians. If this was, you know, in a history class or in an art class, and you show a depiction of something that might be offensive to uh, a Christian, and a Christian student complains, I think everybody on the left would understand. Like, hey, let me introduce you to www.getoverit.com. Because I don't care if you're offended by it. That's okay. And and you were also given a warning, so you could have just like say, hey, I'm just not gonna be there for this particular lesson, and it's okay. I'll get I'll be allowed to be excused for this lesson. Uh, but even in a situation where there wasn't a warning, I would still say, get over it. Because not everybody has to abide by your particular worldview. You know, there are plenty of things. Are you kidding me? If I went through the way various classes are taught, particularly in my field of expertise, like you know, politics or history, if I sat through a class in almost any school district in America, I'm sure I could find particular things that I'm like, ah, this is, I, I don't like this. This is bad. They're not teaching it right. Or even, yeah, I'm offended by how off this is. Who cares? Like, should I be able to fire every single teacher who, who does something I don't like? Like, this is so, it's such a giant overreach. And it's this sensitivity what this is, is a good instinct, which is like, let's be fair to minorities, whether it be racial minorities, religious minorities, minorities, etc. It's taking that instinct and stretching it to an absurd degree where the actual oppressor in this instance is the student. You're going to take away somebody's job from them because they did a good job at their job. That's what this is. I mean, you can't give veto power to somebody because of the group that they're in. You can't say, oh, any Muslim gets veto power over, over you know, anything involving this topic. You can't say any black person or brown person gets veto power over any conversation about this particular topic. So ultimately, at the end of the day, this is nothing but an attack on educational and academic freedom. That's all it is. And it's oversensitivity that's being enforced in an authoritarian way. That's all this is. And for the love of God, what needs to be made clear is... This is not and should not be what the left stands for. Remember, guys, there was a time, and this was correct in my view, 1960s, 1970s, where the left, we were the ones claiming the mantle of free expression, free speech, academic freedom, etc. And the reason why we did that is because, as anybody who's familiar with this stuff knows, if you actually question power centers, you're first in line to be censored or fired. And so the left is supposed to, look, the whole core of leftist politics is we go after power centers. You know, we're going to call out whatever, U.S. imperialism, the deep state, uh, the corporate powers and billionaires and capitalism, all these dominant structures in society. You need protections, free speech protections, particularly for when you're going after the powerful because they don't want to let that opinion be heard. But at some point along the way, 
there's this weird inversion of the principles where now there's some segment of the left that believes in uh, authoritarianism. If you utter anything I disagree with, or if you're, you know, sufficiently insensitive in my, with my weird standard of insensitivity, you're done. No, fuck that. And by the way, final point, this is an instance of horseshoe theory actually being correct. Because you know who would agree with this? Far-right fundamentalist Muslims. So you have far-right fundamentalist Muslims who just want to silence, censor any sort of criticism of their religion or get rid of anybody who violates any rule within their religion, their interpretation of their religion. They are now agreeing with lefties like the associate vice president of inclusive excellence. And it, the agreement is over, yeah, let's censor things that like hurt feelings or break my rules. And I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. It's called, it's called being a human, being annoyed by something, being offended by something, and to actually take away somebody's job and materially damage their life because you happen to not like some minor infraction, which isn't even an infraction. No, I can't, especially since there was a warning, all that stuff. I mean, get out of here. This is crazy. So now teachers got to walk on eggshells 24 seven because I might offend a student. And if I offend a student, I'll lose my job. No, that's, that's absurd. And, um, everybody should oppose it. Alright guys, that's the show. I love y'all very much. Thank you for listening to me babble yet again. Another day, another babble session. Another day, another vape puff on air. Um, Alright, subscribe to the channel, y'all. Look, there was... I don't know how much of this I'm, I'm, I should tell, but there was a massive glitch on YouTube the other day, and it was terrifying. We thought maybe we were getting Adpocalypse 2.0, because... um. And it wasn't just me, it was David Dole, David Pakman, Breaking Points. Like, virtually every uh, political YouTuber randomly flatlined with their views in the middle of the day, right? So there was one video I had, like, the average number of views I would have gotten on that video after that amount of hours up was, like, 40,000 views. It had 2,000 views, it said on the back end. So we didn't know, hey, is this a glitch? Or is this, like, Crackdown 3.0 on political YouTube? And we were absolutely terrified. And so... You know, we're getting certain answers from YouTube. Um, the answers are, it was a glitch, don't worry about it, yada yada. We'll see, right? But needless to say, we're all terrified. It's a really fragile ecosystem that we got here on YouTube. Um, you know, at any, we're at the whims of this giant corporation, and it's kind of terrifying. So anyway, this is my long way of saying, um, help the channel out however you can. Subscribe to the channel, click that little bell icon so you get a notification every single time a video drops. Um, or you could also listen to the show on Spotify. Or other, you know, podcasting outlets. We're over there now. So, you know, if you want to check it out there, by all means, go right ahead. And um, support the show on Patreon. Support uh, Crystal Kylan friends on Substack. Because, again, it's a very fragile thing we got going on here. And sometimes we get a false sense of security. But if you feel secure, that indeed is false. So, uh, very weird, weird week to say the least. But anyway, I love all you from the bottom of my heart. I'll talk to you all soon. Much love. Peace. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.